Thank you for tuning into the Dope Vision Spears podcast. Your boy Frank Nate. I'm back for another episode, man. I got my guy, one of the one of the illest DJs in the Bay Area, man. He's gonna kind of talk to us about some of those <laughs> tips and tricks that he's been kind of doing to keep the crowd live and all these different events that he be doing, man. I want you guys to tap in and and listen to this guy and hear what he has to say, man. So. Man, my God, DJ Critty, man, what's good with you, man? <laughs> what's up with it, bro? It's a hell of an intro, bro. Appreciate you, man. How, how, how you doing, bro? <laughs> man, I'm doing good, man. Just holding it down, you know, being a dad, trying to talk to my people, man, see what they've been up to. You know, the pandemic kind of been tearing everybody apart. We haven't had a chance, opportunity to kind of touch touch bases and link up with everybody. You know, I'd be kind of in my own little world, you know, dealing with the family and the kids and, you know, everybody else be kind of doing their own thing too. So I try to reach out to people and see how they're doing, man. It's my opportunity to actually talk to everybody and kind of see how they've been doing to catch up, man. How about you? Yeah, this is great, man, because I, I ain't been able to talk to you in a minute, bro. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We ain't had to, like, I ain't seen you at an event in a while, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was going steady for a minute all the, during the trap art days yeah. man like yeah yeah we heavy in there yes sir <laughs> yeah, we heavy in there man we were heavy yeah. in the days man coming there and you already got the crowd you know what i'm saying going crazy doing your thing man you know going back and <laughs> forth between oakland and the city man just kind of like just staying tapped in like you said on a consistent basis then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and it's just like you don't see your peoples for almost two years man besides social media Exactly. And I, I lost all my social skills, bro. You know what I'm saying? Don't know how to talk to people no more. You know what I'm Been in the yeah. house like a hermit. So yeah, I'm trying to man. knock the dust off with our little conversation here. So Absolutely, man. I totally get it. That's how I be too, man. Like I kind of step out here and there, but not often, man. I probably since the pandemic hit, man, I might have been outside maybe two or three times. It ain't really been that much, man. You know, trying to go out and be social and stuff. So I totally get it, man. You know, just kind of Trying to get back in the in the swing of things, talking to people, kind of get the get the conversations back going, seeing how people doing, man, and trying to see, trying to get trying to get a little bit more of this information from from everybody, man, because I know the pandemic kind of forced everybody to kind of shut it down and you know kind of readjust their plans on what they had going, because I'm pretty sure everybody had a lot of plans that were set up for 2020 and, and beyond, and all of a sudden we had to like shut it down and kind of readjust the plan. So for you as a DJ, how did that affect you? Man, well, I mean, the first thing was just like we kind of alluded to it before when we were talking before uh, before recording. But like, man, um, really, with the the movement into the digital space of the DJs, like everything turned to like, okay, you had to learn a production software. You had to have your your video cards. You had to have your cameras and 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 everything to set up a whole visual production to go along with the audio mixes that you was producing so djs was on twitch on instagram you know so, and it really blew up after after d nice had his whole yeah. little you know the pandemic the pandemic sets and it, everything just totally went virtual and that was where um you know if you make money as a dj you had to kind of learn that space because there was all these different things like conferences and stuff that where there was you know where it was a bad thing of the pandemic it was a whole lot of opportunity opened up, you know, like that you just kind of had to, you know, if you uh, kind of quick witted, you can kind of learn how to navigate the space and just use those same, you know, that same networking that you had before as a DJ to try to take advantage of that, uh, that digital space that we had moved into. But that was the biggest, honestly, biggest uh, uh, adjustment for me. Um, but w one thing I did see that was really interesting uh, once the pandemic came was how many uh, weddings were being booked out um ahead of time like people were planning for like coming out of the pandemic and it's been since you know the since the vaccination and the boosters i've seen a huge influx in weddings like i haven't seen since i've been djing and doing weddings and stuff like that it's just like a huge boom in weddings which is a to me a beautiful thing out of fact from a society standpoint yeah. just looking at just seeing like oh dang like People was inside and, and in love. You know what I'm saying? Well, you hear all the stories about like, oh man, people gonna be sick of each other. But now nah, people was getting hitched, man. Like it's it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. So so yeah. So I've just been doing a bunch of weddings and uh, and yeah, man, so yeah, the pandemic was uh, was a lot of bad, a lot of good that came from it as well. You know what I'm saying? I think we all had to kind of switch it up. Yeah, I, I can agree, man. I, I know how those uh those weddings, because you know. You know, being married myself, we had to go through that whole, you know, phase of planning. And I can imagine a lot of people probably had to different things planned for 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we have a, a total shutdown, all these venues with all these weddings lined up. You know, normally it kind of be spaced out throughout the year, you know, through the wedding season time and spaced out. Then all of a sudden you just completely get shut down 
right in the right in the thick of it. And then you just don't know when, and then all of a sudden the restrictions start to lighten up here in the Bay Area, and now people are like, look, we can book, we rebooking venues, and now it's probably just like I say, a large influx of people that's like, look, we already had this on deck, let's go ahead and go, let's go ahead and stay booked. And I'm pretty sure a DJ like yourself, you probably just staying booked now. You like every other weekend, you probably got putting six hours in at a DJ booth at somebody's wedding, or probably double booked at some point. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, honestly, it's, it's crazy to me how far in advance people are booking out because they're having to book venues so far out because of this influx in weddings that they're booking out in June and May of next year. So wow. it's like typically I would see like around now like weddings coming in for like October, you know, August, things like that. But people are on top of things now because they have to book so far in advance. So it's just, man, a testament to how how many people are coming out and that industry is just, man, bo- booming. Oh man, I know it, man. That, that wedding business, it's a it's a totally different world when you're dealing with the the wedding industry, man. You know, you can make some crazy money. I was I was trying to do weddings in the beginning when I first started doing photography, man. Mm-hmm. I was trying to do weddings, but man, I found that it just it was like an all day event. You know what I mean? You putting six, yep. seven, eight hours in an all day event for a wedding, which it paid good, but you know, I just was like, oh, my entire day is gone, and you just like. That's just part of the work, you know what I mean? At least with the DJ, you yeah. come in, you do your sets, and you kind of get through the wedding, get through the reception, and you kind of done with it. But as a photographer, man, you got to beat up for the six, eight hours, and you got to go put in some more hours <laughs> yeah. going editing and stuff like that. So, man. Uh, I, but I'm going to have to challenge you on that, though, bro, because uh, <laughs> all the hours we got to put in leading up to it, like working oh, with the Oh, yeah, I don't think about that. Yeah, the, the yeah. songs, like, to walk down, the walk songs to walk down the yeah. aisle, the intro songs, the specialty songs that you have to work with them to get together. Oh, and then it's like, yeah. you got to really know, like, the demographics that. of the wedding. And then it's like, you got set up and breakdown of all the equipment. So I'm there, like, at least two to three hours before the wedding even starts taping down cords and setting up speakers and yeah so it's it's a lot and then i'm usually the last one leaving the venue because i'm taking up all the tape yeah wrapping all the cords tell you you gotta load up the car you know what i'm saying so yeah so it honestly take a whole like it takes for sure it takes a whole day and let alone say you got to travel somewhere it's it's a lot but i will say that i weddings are my favorite to DJ, like they're they're really? for sure my favorite over, event over, to over, DJ. over nightclubs and, and and different events like that. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, and, and it's not just because you get paid more; it's it's legit because like you get to play for the a wide range of ages. So like I get to hit all types of different types of music that I just enjoy. Like you can go old school while it's like you know because there's parents and grandparents and and kids, so you can hit them with like old school vibes and and slowly transition it into, then you get into the more ratchet stuff as, uh, you know, as the old people tired out, you tire out, get off the floor, and then you got the, and you just see the the blending of the families, because that's where, okay. the, honestly, the ceremony is all great and whatnot, but the, honestly, the real marriage happens on the reception dance floor, when those families are coming together and, and cutting a rug together, because yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. when the, when the bonding starts, when y'all sweating together on the yeah, dance floor, yeah. man, I really take pride in my job at, the, at those moments, like, for real, like, Hey, but I, uh, I, I get you. Go ahead. I get you. No, I'm saying yeah. I get you, man. I mean, cut you off. I said I get you because, like, going through my wedding, you know, you had to, like, I didn't even think about the DJ. You know, we had to get the, you know, the song that you walk down the aisle for, and what we want to yep. play at the, the intro to walk in, where we coming through the reception doors, and you know, making sure you have uh, all that stuff set up. And I didn't think about like the setup and breakdown for the DJ. You know what I mean? Because you don't really, because you never ever really there then, because they're all like I said, you're always there first. You just always yep. come there, and the DJ's already playing music, <laughs> so you don't really think about that. So I told you, so do you factor that price into your, into your cost? Like when you're actually giving a quote to someone like, Hey, this is my price and not necessarily just a flat fee for a wedding. You just kind of factor all that stuff in. Yeah. I got charged an equipment fee and, a, uh, and, that, and the equipment fee handles like basically the rental of the equipment. It, I mean, it's my equipment, but um, in case I wouldn't have to bring it, but, um, but yeah, the rental of the equipment, it handles like setup and breakdown and whatnot. So yeah, I definitely have to factor that in, and then the setup because it's a it's a ton of setup. Like when you factor in taping down t- cords that go across, you know, like you you could be running cords fifty to a hundred feet. You know what I'm saying? And yep. you got to tape all that down. So honestly, before the before the wedding even starts, I'm exhausted because I've been sweating, 
bent to over, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So what so taking a step back, like what kind of got you into DJing? You know what I mean? Because I know when I was coming up, nobody around me wanted to DJ. We just kind of listened to the radio, and it was always "God Sweet Tan Love" would be on the radio, but we never yeah. thought to say, "Hey, man, how can I get into this DJ space?" So as a kid, did you always want to be be a DJ as a kid? Well, it, it started with my dad. My dad DJ, so he used to be in a. Uh, in a funk band back in the day called uh, Super Snap. <laughs> it was like a Bay Area funk band, and uh, he played saxophone. And that love for music, like he just always had records, and he ended up becoming uh, not like a not like a scratch DJ, but he did like tons of events, weddings mm-hmm. and birthdays and stuff like that. He'd have the CDs and uh, have a little mixer, and so I used to tag along to events with him and and like help him set up and. So I've always been around DJing, like I was always around it, like really it learned, it, it helped me learn the most important part of DJing, which is like energy and like reading crowds and like reading what, like how you have to keep a certain energy going and then there's ebbs and flows of a party and you just kind of got to ride those waves, like learning that kind of stuff before even learning how to scratch and mix and do all that kind of stuff, learning that part of it was crucial to me uh, becoming a DJ, but I still didn't necessarily want to become a DJ. Like I, I like I DJ my eighth grade, uh, like graduation dinner and like stuff like that. So I've been, I've been around it since forever. Like I remember doing di- parties in high school. Uh, but yeah, like, it, it, but so I really started like really getting into it, like with the programs like Serato and like doing like the nightclub venues and stuff when I came back from college I, I kind of stuck with music the whole time like it was more in the capacity of like <laughs> rapping I thought I, I wanted to be a rapper or something like that but I always knew it wasn't really <laughs> it wasn't really for me <laughs> you know what I'm saying? but uh, you know we all tried to do a little bit of rapping but when I came back from school when I came back from DC I um I had some friends that were actually talented at rapping and uh, they needed a a DJ to DJ their sets when they were doing shows and stuff like that. And they knew I had DJed in the past. So they're like, Hey, you know, would you mind like being our DJ? Like, could you like figure this stuff out and, uh, and be our DJ? And I had no like experience with like, cause this is when I need like to know like Serato and the actual DJ software. This is like 2012. So where I really needed to learn like the, the the technicalities of actually DJing, and I knew nothing. So I literally was starting from scratch from that uh, standpoint. Wow. Had a friend that had some turntables and a mixer that he had wanted to DJ, didn't work for him, so he gave it to me for a low flat price. Oh, and man, I just that's honestly, weird. yeah, and you know, it was at that period where it was like I just came back from school. I was working, but you know, no kids, no nothing, so I had free time. So I was just on it just trying to learn youtube everything else like learning the software trying to learn you know download building my catalog up stuff like that and yeah so 2012 i got my first set of turntables and honestly haven't haven't looked back since (laughs) man wow that's that's a journey man you know what i mean coming kind of you know we all kind of have that our fathers or our parents or someone we know in the family is kind of always the one that kind of like puts it in us, but not necessarily knowing that they put it in us. It's just kind of have mm-hmm. you kind of be around them for a while. And then next thing you know, as you grow up, you kind of don't know why you do something, but it's already kind of exactly. in your DNA that you're, that it's already in your DNA. You don't really recognize it until you get a little bit older. You start to look back. It's like, man, I did used to kind of go hang around my mom or my pops or my uncle when they was doing this and doing that. And it kind of gives you that, that confidence and, you know, gives you the ability to kind of push forward because you know, like, Hey, look, it's in my blood. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And, as, and, and as a DJ, you know, I've you know been rocking with you since I got in the Bay and just been kind of seeing you kind of do your thing. But, you know, I never really thought about a good DJ versus a bad DJ until you go to somewhere when you when the DJ is not good. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah, you don't yeah, really know yeah. how to, you know, I never really thought about how do you, how do, like, how do you judge a good DJ to a bad DJ? And you don't really know how until you go somewhere when a DJ is kind of bad, when they're just not playing this, the songs you want to hear. So as a DJ, how do you? How do you balance that, you know, when you're at a party somewhere? How do you balance mm. to um, those? Do I play the hot songs now? Do I play the old songs? Or do I play the songs that they probably haven't heard in a long, a long time? Like, how do you balance mm-hmm. that, 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 um, that, that, that time period throughout the party? Like, how do you do that? Yeah. So it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of reading, reading the crowd and seeing where they're at, like, trying to get a, a, a beat on the, on the crowd. But 
sometimes that's hard too because you have some crowds that are just a little bit more dead than others like you could be giving them all that you got and you're just not reading us but I, I always try to find one person like just give me one per one head nodding one toe tapping and I'm gonna try to use that I want to use that energy to infuse the rest of the crowd like because I feel like if that person gives me some energy like that's it's gonna reverberate through the crowd so I try to use that as, as my best like judge but just in in overall like from a like a technical dj standpoint like i say like when I, if i'm doing an event and say like i have the whole of it like even if i'm doing like a, a set and i'm on with another dj like i usually try to um i want the party to start off like somewhat vibey i don't want to just be hitting them over the head with like uh dj mustard and migos and stuff like <laughs> at the door like if it's a 10 to 2 event like you know what i'm saying uh -huh. like I want them to come into some, some R and B, yeah, some chill hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And, and then quick, slowly, as the, you got to bring the night to like a peak. You want to bring them back down. You know, if you hit them over the head the whole time, they're gonna get tired of that. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna get bored with that. And if you keep it down here the whole time, it's gonna be dead. You got to take them up and down like a good roller coaster, man. You gotta you gotta take them with you. And that's what a good DJ honestly does. Okay. And that's where like blending and like mixing is like you take those tools that you learn as a DJ, like blending the music together and doing different, whether it's trick mixes or just, just flat out blending songs together, mm -hmm. like to, to take them through it, but make it smooth. Cause you don't want to take them from here to here right away. Like you might have to play something just a little bit slower while you transition them down here. Or like, it's just, it, it, yeah, it, it's definitely ways to do it, but that's like, that's how I judge, like, I, don't, I never want to call anybody a bad DJ, but, like, that's how I judge, like, the musical night is, like, you know, I, I want to know how they, how many, how many different places they could take me, what kind of journey they could take me on, and, like, how seamlessly they could do it when you're, like, singing, you don't even realize, like, wait, when did they go to this song, like, yeah, you, just, yeah, in, yeah. you just caught up in the yeah, vibe, yeah. like, yep. and, and, yeah, those, those are, that, that's, that would be my answer for that, is, yeah. like, yeah, I want the night to progress, you know what I'm saying, up Ooh, and down. So so when you, as a DJ, when you have a, um, when you're, when you're probably doing a set, like this person might do eight to 10 and you come in and do, you closing it out. So are you guys saying, are you guys talking to each other? Like, Hey, look, don't play this song because I'm going to play this song. You play, I'm going to play this song. You play that song. I'm going to play this song. Are you guys like, you know, bouncing, bouncing songs off each other? Or are you just like, if this person, this person comes in and just play all the hot songs right off the bat, like, do you get mad at that person? Does, you know, like, how does that yeah, work? You know what I mean? Like, how does that work? I think in the DJ world, it's called uh, burnout. You burn somebody out. You burn the next DJ out because you play all the new hits. You know what I'm saying? Oh. But, like, I, I don't think we – I mean, I, I think if, like, you maybe know the other DJ, honestly, I don't know anybody that just talks about it. It's kind of like an unwritten rule. It's like if you're the opening DJ, um, if you have, like, the opening set or not, like, a peak hour set, you shouldn't be playing all the hits. But at the – and sometimes it, it – can get annoying but at the same time like every anytime it's ever happened well I felt like it's happened to me it's usually like it's whatever man I don't worry about like burnout and stuff like that just because it's so many songs out there and it's like to me it's just a challenge to play something else and try to get the crowd to rock with something else with one of the other 10,000 songs you have on your computer <laughs> you know what I'm saying but it is like an unwritten rule like you know what I'm saying like don't I'm not it. like Exactly. Like I try to leave the hit stuff for the peak hour DJ. Like if I'm opening up or something like that, I'm not playing Big Steppin', which is like the hottest <laughs> song in the Bay right now. I'm not about. I'm just not about to do it. I'm not gonna play Blow the Whistle. I'm the opening opening set. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that to me still. T t however old that song is now, that's still like a peak hour song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get, get the you party know gonna, the crowd time. gonna be. They they gonna they gonna they gonna react to it because it's such a popular song. They're gonna react. Exactly, exactly. And that, to me, that's not like a, if it's a 10 to 2 event, that's not a 10 to 10 to 11.30 song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To me, that's like peak hour song. Like It's so. after midnight. Let's get it. Let's, that's the, Ex that's the, that's the get exactly. lit time, you know, after midnight. So do as a DJ, do you like do you go listen to other DJ sets to kind of get a vibe and to feel like what are they doing so that you can kind of pick up on some of those things that they're doing? Or you just like, I don't want it. Like some rappers, like, I don't want to hear nobody else rap because I don't want to feel like I'm stealing. They don't want, I don't want to feel like I'm stealing from somebody. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah. I definitely would prefer to go listen to. Yeah. I, I love going to listen to other DJs because I don't care how good or bad the DJ is. Like I'm learning something like you, you like everybody has their own, like either style or they like this song for some reason. And I can read like, 
okay, the crowd reacted to this song this way, or they blended this like this. And I can always usually take something to like add it to my own repertoire. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I, I mean, right now I feel like I'm an amalgam of all like the D like Bay area DJs right now that, that I've heard. Like I've learned stuff from, from my emotion, from, from DC, from, uh, from Red Corvette, from Dog, all these people like I've, I've, I've like that I've spun with. Like I take some like everybody has their like something that they're really good at or like like song like they know how to like pick up something in in the crowd and run with it or um it's just yeah it's just something I can learn from every DJ so yeah I don't I love to hear sets I love to hear sets. Other do you prefer to do you prefer as a DJ do you prefer to do large venues or do you like to do more smaller intimate venues because I went to the Warriors game and I forgot the DJ's name but he's um he DJs I think at the radio station here and he he normally does the Warriors games and he had the in that arena is yeah sharp yeah sharp yeah Sorry, yeah sharp. and so he does the the arena uh, um. DJ sets and that set was like crazy. You know, he was on the floor. Yeah. He's just doing a crazy set. You know what I mean? He and, and it's, it's like the, the the crowd was like coming in, so you really wasn't like all the way into it. But I'm listening to it because I've heard him yeah. do a set before, and so I'm like, wow, this guy's really like going in on the DJ set right now. Like they don't yeah. even understand the music that he's playing, but he has a crazy yeah. set. So, do you prefer those large venues versus smaller venues? Man, and I'm glad you said Sharp because that's somebody I should have mentioned in that last uh, group of names I was mentioning is like somebody that I definitely learned from. But yeah, no, nah, I, I, to say I prefer one over the other, it's just honestly they just different because at the end of the day, it's you, it's these two decks, and it's the output of music that you got coming out of there. Like with the larger venues, it's harder, it's harder to read the crowd, and it's obviously a bigger sample size of people to. Uh, to choose from so it's a little bit harder but at the same time it's like you could still like feel that feel, oops, excuse me feel that energy from uh from either one like I love the intimate sets because you can like uh really like vibe with the people but then at the same time like uh the only the biggest thing I probably did is like the Stanford football games and shout out to D Sharp helped me uh <laughs> get in there that's what's um up. uh but yeah, so like that was crazy. Like playing for a whole stadium of people, like you can't really like. It's hard to explain that it's feeling. Probably man. Hard to like, it's probably hard to gauge it because you got, like I said, the the age gap is so large and the demographic exactly. is so different that you just gotta kind of just go. So when you have something like that, do you have just have a a set of songs that you're gonna just go straight to that you like? Hey, these are my songs that I'm gonna play. I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna get out, no matter what, no matter what's <laughs> going on. I'm playing these songs, or are you trying to like look out in the crowd and get a couple of people and like, okay, I'm gonna kind of go this direction, or you kind of have a set like this is what I'm going with. I honestly just kind of went with like I, I did like some well with like I'll use Stanford as an example, and I've been doing uh, USF basketball, University of San Francisco basketball home games recently, and like I really just would do research and like listen to listen to music and like different songs that I felt brought the energy of a sporting event like that. There's, there's certain songs that like just have certain energies like, um, uh, and it was like a bunch of like, um, seven, uh, seven nation army by the white stripes. Like th these are like classic, like arena. That's the one that's that. Dun, 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 okay. Dun, okay. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That, yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. stuff like that. So so like I would be. I mean Ozzy Osbourne and like all these different rock songs like that. I would mix with the also with the songs I would get from the players for pregame. Like because the in both situations, players gave me songs that they wanted uh, for pregame or like the teams want to get warmed up to. Okay. And honestly, a lot of that is in contradiction with uh, with the crowd that's there because there's a lot of they want like. <laughs> the traps the uzi verts and the young, yeah, NBA young yeah. boys even the clean versions of that stuff sometimes it's just like oh yeah, uh, yeah yeah that's why that's why i be wondering like when you go into the event you had to go on do you go on is there is there a place where you can go and find like nothing but clean versions of songs do do all rappers make clean versions of songs or do they just like you got to go clean it up yourself and like mute it out and stuff how does that work yeah, so they have like uh, basically when you DJ, like you can sign up for these DJ pools where they have like basically, I think they're associated with like the labels and stuff like that. So when they put out songs, you can get the clean version, the dirty version, you can get remixes and stuff like that. And they have okay. like the websites tailored to DJs for that. So you can download the clean version and the dirty version for 
you get a, it's like a monthly subscription, unlimited okay. downloads, and then yeah. So I so that I, I definitely I'm depending on like those subscriptions, making sure I can get the clean versions because I would spend way too much time trying to uh, trying to clean, clean up, up those songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as a DJ and like you have to be listening to a lot of like I listen to music every day of my life, pretty much. I would say pretty much every day of my life because it's like it's what I do. As a DJ, how much how much are you putting time into your craft of like listening to music and listen to a wide variety of music? Because you just can't listen mm-hmm. to just the black rappers all the time. You have to listen mm-hmm. to you know pop music, which I feel like rap is pop now, but pop mm-hmm. music and all different type of genres. So how would you classify your listening skills as far as listening to different types of music? Yeah, so I try to like keep um, keep uh, a nice range of playlists in spotify that i know to go to for certain types of music like that that i may not come across in like my regular um library or my regular listening because i'm i'm mostly r&b hip-hop when i'm listening to music yeah um but when i need to go into those other realms like i definitely have some playlists that i depend on to like go listen to music and i and if, if it's pop if it's reggae if it's anything else like i think i have a decent enough ear to like hear what's like was good and that'll make a crowd move so like i'll go in there and like um and i i just kind of have a system like i like the songs that i like and like i just kind of every day just kind of try to listen it's honestly as i digress a little bit but it it honestly has kind of ruined listening to music for me because i don't get the chance to like dive into albums because like when i'm listening to music i'm always listening for what i can use in a set and i feel like i'm always preparing for the next set and so like i don't get to listen to like 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 the stuff that like that i really just you know like kendrick lamar albums that you just want to like vibe out to and just ride out to i feel like i'm always like on the job like listening for something so i definitely got to correct that but yeah yeah so are you waiting for the masses to tell you a song is hot or do you kind of like when you listen to a song or or whatever your playlist is and it kind of pop up on your playlist you like hmm this song it could be hot let me go ahead and put it in rotation or do you kind of wait for the masses to kind of say, this is hot? Mm, it's a little bit of both. Like, it, it, the thing is, like, I feel like DJs have the power to make things pop because, like I was telling you, like, blending music and mixing stuff together and, like, keeping that energy. If if a song has a certain energy and you feel it has that, if you can match it with some popular stuff that people are already listening to, people are going to, are going to, take well to that song like that's one of my favorite things is when somebody comes up and asks me hey what's this like who who is okay. this like that's okay. one of the best yeah, compliments introducing me as a DJ. Introducing it. exactly or if i see people with their shazams out or or somebody's if somebody's like oh, i shazam your whole set and i enjoy like you know like i love man i love that's one of the best compliments a dj can get is like somebody trying to shazam a song but uh but yeah no i think it's our duty to like to and to take chances and to put stuff like that in our set something i really think i I need to do more but um but yeah so uh definitely definitely so and i know you were talking about we was kind of circling back to back when you were doing weddings you kind of saying to set up and preparing before so how long will it how long do you prepare beforehand to get a playlist together how many songs are you putting like 100 songs 300 songs and how do you remember because I'm the worst when it comes to songs. I can't remember titles of songs. I don't really, yeah. I'm not really good with all the lyrics of songs. So how do you remember all those titles when you have to go and search those songs? I honestly, I can't. And a lot of, and a lot of times I just draw a blank. I know what song I want to play and I can't remember the name of it. Like it'll be a super popular song too. And I just can't like, there's tens of thousands of song, name songs in your head at, at once. And like, you can't scroll through and see everything at one time on your computer. <laughs> and honestly, bro, I could give you an example. Like just the other day, two actually, I was uh, I was doing a party and I wanted to play. Uh, look, I can't think of the name of it now. Is uh, shoot. Uh, oh, I'm gonna blank it. Look, I got the computer right here. I got. It. <laughs> it's T Pain and uh, T Pain and Kanye. Uh, fuck. Uh, uh, good life. I was, I was like, good oh, life. oh I yeah. I couldn't think of the name of it, so I had to search. I had to search Pain and Kanye. And I couldn't find because I couldn't find it for the I couldn't think of the name for the life of me. Then I was playing another uh, yay and I could not think all falls down. I couldn't think yeah. of the name of it. I wanted to play. It was like one of those like kind of end toward the end of a set. And I had to lean over and ask somebody. I was like, hey, I was like, what's the Kanye song with the Lauryn Hill sample? I'm drawing a black. I had to literally ask somebody like because I wanted to play it that bad and couldn't think of it. It's sad. It's honestly sad. <laughs> like, 
Uh, but when you're in the heat of the moment, like, and you like, yeah. you, you feel that like that time crunch on the song, like the song is, is getting to the end of a song, and you're like, dang, what am I playing next? What am I playing next? And you're trying to like find something, man. You get desperate. <laughs> I know. So, so you guys don't have like a whole list of songs that you can just kind of go and like pop in, like you like here's a here's a whole list of songs I know I'm going to play tonight. Or do you kind of like get out of it? You like make the list and then you kind of abandon the list halfway through the set and you just kind of yeah. like missing it. Is that how it goes? I used to do that, but I had to abandon it all together because I would make a playlist. But there's no way to know exactly how a crowd, like what you're going to play, like how a crowd is going to react to whatever that playlist is that you have set up or what you think you wanted to play. I would always end up abandoning it. So like basically I spent a lot of the pandemic trying to organize my music library in a way that's a little bit more dynamic. So like I've been changing like the genre title, this is getting real technical, but like the genre titles to start to describe like different things like hip hop classic. And then I have to have like the decade, like the tens, the, the 2000s, the 20s. And that way, like I can just, I have playlists set up with just those like, because you can set up like smart playlists that just search in the genre for these specific okay. words. So like I want to go uh, R&B 2000s and sexy. So like I'll, I, I can set up a playlist for all that. So where quickly all those songs will just show up in a playlist. Like, and, and I've been using that to like try to make my playlist a little bit more dynamic. So as the party's happening live, I'm like, oh, they responded to this they'll probably like this. So I can okay. go on a set of, of Afro beat slaps or, you know what I'm saying? Or Bay yeah. classics and stuff like that. So, yeah. So I definitely tried to make it more uh, dynamic so that I could just go into a party, read the crowd and my, my library responds to me as opposed okay. to me searching through it's like, just, cause I see DJs, the... they be in there, they be like one song playing. Like I said, the song might be two minutes and 30 seconds and they're like coming down to the end though. And they're like scrolling, 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 trying to find another song. Yeah. They're trying to get it in and they like searching for a song. <laughs> and I kind of like see it sometimes and I'll be like, I don't really think of it because I don't know what they're doing because I don't, I'm yeah. not a DJ. So I just see them like scrolling for infinite and then they finally find a <laughs> song that they're looking for. So I can get how they can be like a lot going on. You're thinking about so much at one time trying Mm -hmm. you're trying to think of titles of songs and that can kind of be crazy so is there <laughs> one song that you're going that you know you're going to play no matter what or is there a song that you know you're going to play at the nightclub for the night's over and one song that you know you're going to play at the at the um uh, the wedding is that give me them songs give me them the name of those songs that Which i gotta song? play at the nightclub and that now i gotta you, play at the wedding you know you you know you gotta play it. you know you gotta play it. oh man oh shoot at a wedding, like, oh, there's so many. Like, uh, you got to play. Uh, shoot, can I give a top five? <laughs> yeah, give me top five. Yeah, let's do it. That's even better. Let's go. That's even better. Yeah, at top a wedding. Five song, your top five wedding song that you have to play. Let's go. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Let's Get Married, Jagged Edge, the, okay. the remix. The remix Dude. with uh, what's going on across the... Yeah, oh, yeah, that one. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Mary, that yeah. one at, at a wedding. Um, ooh, Candy, um, uh, yeah, Candy by Cameo, um, ooh, Before I Let Go, okay. Amazing you Frankie some, Beverly, okay. um, these are some classics, man, th th those are the, the, the must plays, the must plays, um, ooh, I want to go with this is how we do it, but that one's kind of like cliche to say. Like, the, and that's these are the, all that's, obviously that, that's at the reception, though. You got to play that. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah. that's at the reception. You're going yeah. hard at the reception. Yeah, got to. Got to. That's when, it, that's when like, the, the grandmas and moms, they all sitting down and exactly. you know, everybody a little turnt at that point. Got a little exactly. drink. That, that come on. <laughs> exactly. And then, so the wobble. The okay. Wobble. Oh, yeah. I, was, I, I, was thinking cha -cha, I thought Cha Cha was in there, but you got the wobble. Yeah, I haven't played. I played the cha-cha. I only play it when it comes by special request. I got burnt out on the cha-cha slide <laughs> in, in, in like ninth grade, eighth grade. Like I was like, yeah. So now I got a little. I'm got to have like a little adverse reaction to it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, that for sure. The wild one. I, I, let me get. Let me get you, get you one more. Oh, I'm. A, it's all old school because these are all my favorite ones to play. But this will be um, by Natalie Cole. This will be. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, you got that's some, usually you got my starter. There. Yeah, that's usually my starter because it get everybody on the that's dance everybody. floor, all age range, everybody yep. singing at the top of their lungs. And then from there, you can you can pivot into 
In and out. In and out. And so let, me get them get top five, let me get them top five nightclub oh. anthems that you got to get in. Like, it doesn't have to be in a row, but you know, at, throughout the night, like, if they gonna they gonna look at me sideways if I don't get this if I don't play this record. Oh, right now, oh god, and I I'm bad at this because like when it comes to like the new like the new stuff like I'd be late like I, I'm I'm definitely a, a like a late two thousands like <laughs> you playing nine, like nine, you playing a nine nine two thousand nine nine in the two thousand you playing that two you playing that two you gotta play like that ass up. That juvie sure. gotta come out hey, at some point. Got to. Got and you know which one I try to uh because I try to do my little like sexy sets at the end and it's uh I still run slow motion. That's a that's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a hard one. Yeah, that's a hard one. That's toward yeah. the end of the night. That's a hard one. Yeah, but uh, let let me see. So nightclub, and I'm gonna try to stay current with this one. So for sure, uh big step and get them going. Big step and definitely get them going. Oh shoot. Uh, oh, anything Drake, man. Like, all oh, his stuff has been like, yeah. And Drake is usually one of those like pivots. Like, he got some. He's a savior. He's a savior. He's a DJ savior. Because you can he's type in Drake and you'll find something that somebody <laughs> going to like in the crowd at some point. Like, it's yeah. a, like, a challenge to me is like going in. I'm like, all right, I ain't going to play no Drake tonight. Like, <laughs> this is going to be my challenge. So. <laughs> <laughs> but oh uh, man, man, if any of that New Jersey on uh, uh, on CLB could be way too sexy. Uh, oh, Wakisha, that man oh, can't can money bag. Yeah, money yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's money gotta bag. play some money bag. Uh, oh, anything, anything with like Cardi, any of those Cardi. Oh, the Cardi Cardi songs. Okay, yeah, she, yeah. She got gotta you. get some city girls in there for the you know the Cardi and for the, the city ladies, girls in yeah. there for the ladies. You know what I'm saying. And that Capella Gray get them going too. That okay. uh, uh, the Gallus, the Gallus song, is, and that's a Juvie, Juvie sample. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, I ain't seen nothing get the parties going like that. Uh, like for yeah, real. okay, like, like okay. Big Step. Yeah, that's the yeah, Big Step right in the hard one right now. Big Step in the definitely in the hard yeah. one. Right now. So when when you when you're DJing, you you gotta you like man, I gotta go to this Savior track. You like I gotta get this Drake play, man. I got I can't think of nothing else. Let me get this. Let me get this Drake. <laughs> Some Drake going. You know, well, the crowd's gonna, usually, they gonna give you, they gonna give you a little layup for a moment until you can kind of. Yeah. Get yourself out the hole. So you could de- yeah, but I try to stay three songs ahead always. Like it's like, all right, uh, I gotta go okay. in the next three songs. And that way I don't run into those issues like of, you know, being on crunch and having to guess like, all right, this is what yeah, like trying to type something in at the last minute. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> knowing knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently in the beginning? You know, as a DJ, was something like you know I'll redo my library or kind of mm. do the song selection. Like, what's something that you would do differently? You know, now that you know the skill, now that the skills that you have. Mm. That's a great question. Mm. What would I have done differently, man? Probably just like. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could have. I, I honestly can't even say I would have did anything differently. Honestly, like there, I had such a like a, 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 a laid out path. Like it was just like laid out like perfectly for me. It was like I had no choice but to but to be a DJ and like use my use my uh, what I learned to be successful at it, man. Like it, it, to say I I would do anything differently would be like, man, I really have to like rack my brain because like. Just, just like starting with the trap arts, like that was really like my first like, like steady gig, steady nightclub gigs, and we were doing tributes every night. Mm-hmm. So we were doing tributes to like Rockefeller, we were doing tributes to uh, to Prince and all this, like Erica Badu and all these great artists. And when we would do these tributes, I would have to research music from all these people because like the night would have to be themed that way. So okay. like it was a great way to build up my library. Like I just okay. had the best. Slowly like, growing. Yeah. Slowly growing. Like, cause so it was like, all right, we did a Rockefeller tribute. I had a whole catalog of Rockefeller by the time that gig came up because I'm researching, downloading. I want to, I wanted to be true to the theme. And like for those to be my, like my first, my earliest gigs, like I was slow, like had to go through all of Kendrick's catalog, all of Eric Badu's catalog. So I just built up this like deep catalog of like music from all these like great artists. 
So I had these tools just available for me to 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 play. So it's like people be like, man, I haven't heard that in years or da da da. And it's like, man, like I'm I'm just grateful for the the opportunities that came about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, sorry, that was a long winded way to oh, go it's all around good. your question, but like, it's all good, I, man. honestly, I, I think I, I'm thankful every day for the for my situation, <laughs> my DJ situation, man. Like, like yeah, I just feel like things. It would probably just be organizing my music music oh, differently, God. but that takes learning. You got to go through some failed <laughs> playlists before you get that right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what are some of your pet peeves as a DJ? Like, I know I sometimes, you know, as a photographer, I'm kind of like taking a break and I'm kind of sitting beside the DJ, kind of going thumbing through my photos, and I see somebody run up to the booth. Hey, can you play this and play that? Like, what's some of your pet peeves as a DJ? Yeah, I don't like requests. I hate. Don't just show me your phone. Just hold your phone <laughs> in my face, like, and I'm supposed to read the phone, like. Yeah, like any of that stuff. Like I'll type a message on my phone and hold it back to you. Like I don't read phones. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I, it, that's for sure. Like the worst. And then then somebody that's like feels hella entitled to their request. Like they're really upset that you didn't play something, or they come up like I'm about to leave and I haven't heard my song yet. It's like bye. Okay. Like yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's def- that's for sure. And I don't want to make it sound like I hate like all requests, but there's definitely an etiquette to it. Like you can be polite about it. Like, and then like, yeah, some people make good requests and it's like, Ooh, like that's a good follow up song to this, or that's a good, that's a good one. Or, but the one is to me is like, people come up and this is another thing, but like people ask you for like the hottest song that's out. And it's like the party been going for 30 minutes and it's like, like, I can't play this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, obviously I'm going to play this. And they're like, Oh, do you have, Way too sexy by Drake, and it's like, yeah, I got it. You just ain't heard it. You ain't gonna hear it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too early yeah. for that. It's too, it's early. too early. It's too early. It's too early. I know I'll be. I know I'll be kind of hitting. I know I kind of. I don't be want to throw no requests, but every now and then I come hit you. I'm like, hey man, you gotta throw that 56 night show on for me. Oh yeah, future, bro. You, every yeah. now and then you throw it on for me. Every now yeah. and then you kind of throw it on for me. like, look. That bro, one I, in the March Madness, man. Yeah, it's Mars Madness. Yeah, I gotta yeah, get. Yeah. I gotta get it, bro. I gotta get that Mars Madness in. That's like when I hear it. When I hear you play it, I like I gotta come, I gotta come listen to it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah, know he play, he saved it for me. He played it. Like yeah. <laughs> I probably asked him way when I first got to like, bro, you got me on that, you got me on that, that 56 nights tonight, right? You like, I got you, man, I got you. That's I got you. He's like, I got you. <laughs> and then you like randomly played it like some t- some point throughout the night, and I was like, I gotta go here, bro. Cause it's like it's just like it's go crazy. It, it, it go crazy. That Mars Magic yeah. go crazy, man. Yeah, so, I mean, you gotta you you gotta find the right moment to like. Yep. For when to play, and that's the thing too with requests is like people just want to hear what they want to hear, and it's like, all right, I have a vision of how I want this night to go, and that don't fit in to right here, but I might be able to fit in here, or I think it's great for right here. You know what I'm saying in the night, so yeah, man, it's 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 probably a lot more pet peeves, but like yeah, yeah, it's a lot of them as a DJ. (laughs) Like as a DJ, do you have favorite songs that you want to play, and you know sometimes this might not get the crowd going, or do you just kind of keep it in the tuck? Oh, the crowd always comes first. The crowd, crowd for me, like the, the crowd always comes first. Like if I got something in my head that I want to play, but I don't think the crowd is gonna respond well to it, I'd for sure keep it, uh, keep it in the tuck, just cause, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like yeah, I mean, unless it's something I'm trying to put them up on, and I think it'll go over well. But at the end of the day, like we servants to the to the crowd, like that don't mean that that we could have to take every request but but at the end of the day it's like for their enjoyment so like yeah. they they come first so that's why you know people get caught up on like technical stuff of djing like oh dj shouldn't use sync buttons and stuff like that and like just like traditional dj um type stuff and it's just mm-hmm. like man it's about the crowd at the end of the day that's who crowd. it's for it's about the crowd at the end of the day and, so and, when like, I, and then follow and to follow up that like how far do you go into a bad song before you're saying, I got to get out this song and get to the next song? Like, how far do you give Ooh. it? How long do you give it a chance? Like, I know you sometimes you're like, man, I see this song. I think this song going to hit. And you get into it and you don't get the response you think you should get. How far you get? Because sometimes it kind of <laughs> gets me upset with DJs when it's like, or if it's the opposite, like the DJ will be playing a hot song, not necessarily a hot song, but a song that I really enjoy. And they like get out of it so get fast. Right, like, right Right when the verse that you want to hear, they get out of it. Yeah. That's a that's another thing with like DJing. You kind of gotta know how long to keep songs on for, like especially when it's like a hot song. Like some DJs like to fly through records and just get to the next song, get to the next song. But to me, you gotta let some songs breathe. Like people want to enjoy it, they want to rap along, sing along, 
and that's all a matter of like feel like and and, and vibe of the crowd and reading that but um uh damn what was I about to say and I had a good point about the how it'll come back to me damn. just all about just how how long do you let a bad song play just oh like yeah yeah, you- yeah yeah so like honestly it's the first chorus like by the time the first chorus is on if people are not rocking with the chorus Getting it, yeah, getting it out of there, getting it out of there, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if that, that's usually the part of the song that the people, you know, really know and like the the, yeah. the part that they'll really like vibe to. If you get to the chorus and they still not out of there, it's time to get, get it out of there. Yeah. I can tell the I can tell the skill of a DJ. I know I don't know a lot, but I can tell the skill of a DJ if they can get in and out of that international players anthem with uh, Outkast <laughs> and, and Pimp C. If they can let that first that first part of it breathe until Pimp C verse. Like, yeah. I feel like they can really kind of make us, they can really do something with their set because a lot of DJ they struggle with that song. They like, do I, a lot of DJs like to play it through Pimp C verse. A lot of them like to cut it off right at the Pimp C verse. A lot of them like to mm. blend it, blend out uh, uh, Andre's verse and get it into Pimp C verse real quick. Like, but I'm like, that song there because it, it has no drums in the beginning of it. That's a hard yeah. song. Yeah, that's what I mean, but that's still, that's one of my favorite songs to play. But I, I let, Pimp C rock every time. You, get, you gotta, you gotta you, let Pimp C. You, yeah, you gotta, you gotta let. Too. Yeah, you gotta let Pimp C rock on that song. You can't not. Yeah, you can't not let. And the beat when the drums come in, it's so hard. Like, hard, you know yeah. Like, and that's and that's but, DJs do that sometimes. They blend out. They blend out Andre verse for Pimp C verse. But you know, you gotta let that beat. Let sometimes you gotta let that song build. Oh yeah, one hundred. Like that song is perfect as it is. Like I, I don't try to. I don't mix it into nothing. When I drop that song, it drops in at. So I typed the text to it and drop it right in at that so. Like it's just like it could be anything playing. It's like I just drop it in right in that so and let Andre do his thing. Cause as soon as people hear that, so like yeah, they, I know what already, you already know what it is. You already, already know, know what, what it is. is. And the, you know the song is. do its work from there, man. Like you can kind of take a break right then. You can go do some searching because you got a few minutes to cause that song takes a little bit to build. To but I love that see. song too much, bro. I'm out there, I'm with him. Like you know what I'm saying? Hey. Got your back like Cairo <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey, if, hey, if she know if she know if she know Pimp C verse front to back. She a keeper, bro. <laughs> she a keeper. She, know that verse, she, she a keeper. keeper, bro. She know that verse front to back, bro. She a keeper, bro. Like that verse yeah. so hard. And if she know that verse from beginning to end, bro, she a keeper, man. Don't play yourself. Yeah, but I, I notice like most of the time, like by the time Bum B coming on, that's usually when like yeah DJs are get. That's usually when they I get, get out, out of. But even they get out I'll of, even like Bum, I damn near be tempted to let Bum B rock it up, baby. You've been rolling solo. Baby. Yeah, because it's a long, so, it's a long song. Yeah, it's a yeah. long song, and DJs but, but be kind of like they get in and out of it quick. Yeah, but yeah, by the time Bum B coming on, it's usually time to like get something else in there so that the, the crowd stay. You know what I'm saying? People fuck mode. with with Bum B, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just yeah, like once that. A, it's just hard to come. It's just hard to come out to pump, Pimp C. It's hard to come out to at, at verse so hard. It's hard to come exactly. out. Exactly. You got so to let Pimp C <laughs> Yeah, and as a DJ, what kind of tips do you get to like up and coming DJs? Like what what's some of those tips and tricks that you get, what you want to give to them to like, Ooh. they're just not getting started? Yeah, um, definitely like d- take whatever opportunity you can to get heard and like don't worry about getting paid for it right away. It's like, take whatever, and I don't mean like nothing that's going to undercut nobody, but take like backyard stuff, anything that you can to get hurt. And have business cards from day one. Take whatever gigs you can get. And because with DJing, so much of like your networking just comes from people hearing you spin and feeling the music that you put out there. So if you really believe in yourself, take the gigs, have your business cards and just get your, yeah, you get your name out there. You don't even have to do a ton of marketing word of mouth. Well, if you, if you really like are good with your craft and like you have a talent for it and you can read people and read crowds and create that energy, man, people get hooked on that. They just want, they want that energy, whatever energy you can bring at the event. So I'm, I'm like, yeah. So get out there, take whatever gig you can. Don't worry about like, numbers and making money off of it at first do it for the the passion of it you know what i'm saying you got to really love this because it's like it's a lot man when you from the technology to like staying up on music to marketing yourself it, it's a lot to get into and if you don't have that like base level passion for it, it it's, it's gonna be right set up out. for failure man yeah it's gonna fizzle so, out 
and I wanted to actually like because I see the difference in some some DJs where a lot of DJs they're on the mic and a lot of DJs they stay off the mic. Like, what is your what is your standpoint on it? Do like are you do you want to be on the mic or do you just want to let the music speak for itself? So I mean, it's different for every DJ. I'm definitely more on the side of not speaking on the mic just because. It's just never really been like my thing. I prefer to let the music talk. Like I don't like cutting the music out, talking over it. I, I don't got a good funk flex voice, so I can't be on there. All the single ladies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't got that. Like I don't even got that kind of energy, bro. Like got that straight West Coast laid yeah. back, you know what I'm saying? But uh but I will like it really just depends on like the vibe. Like I'll get in like and like I like, like to get on the mic and crack some jokes if I feel comfortable with the crowd, like you know what I'm saying, call some people out. Anything like that, but for the most part, I prefer to just let the music rock. Yeah, the music like, yeah, be by, if I could be behind a curtain and DJing, <laughs> I would love better. it, bro. Even better, better, bro. Just like, let the music where's play. It coming from? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they have, like eyes, DJ eyes. <laughs> and what's your favorite set? Like, I know you said you got the reggae, you got the rap, you got Ooh. the pop. You know what I'm saying? You got the oldies. You got the two thousands, like you know. Before I get you out of here, you got to give me your three best sets that you really enjoy that you want to get through through the night. I know it's different venues; it calls for different music. But I know some places you know you're gonna play this reggae music, you know you're gonna play some trap music, or you're just gonna yeah. play these oldies. Like, what are some of them sets that you really enjoy? Man, honestly, uh, who was I just talking to? This uh, Red Corvette, DJ Red Corvette. She was telling me like she's like, I love DJing brunches, and it's true, like. And I, I associate it with uh, wedding uh, dinners and because it's the same kind of like style of music that I play for both. And it's like that good, like classic R&B. Those are my favorite sets to get through, especially with like a crowd that really knows the music, like where you can play some Mary J. Blige, some SWV, you know what I'm saying? Like that good classic where people are just singing at the top of their lungs, like, um, Man, yeah, because I, I had a brunch the other day where it was like, put on that Mary J, everything, and it was just like, people were just like, it was kind of like euphoric, like everybody was just like singing and dancing and like, real life, like, it, you could tell it took them somewhere, but yeah, for sure, those those, those R&B sets in the brunch, you can play, because you don't got to play like the, the hard stuff, you don't got to play the trap stuff, people aren't necessarily looking to be on the dance floor like twerking. They just want to. They want to vibe. They just trying to catch a vibe. vibe. They day drinking. They just want to catch a vibe, and that's that's the my favorite part, of DJ, because it's like low low anxiety. It's chill vibes. Like you know, what I'm saying you go from some West Coast corrupt funk type. It's it's a funky vibe. It's just like yeah, funk yeah. stuff. A funk funk <laughs> funk stuff is 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 my favorite. All right, and my last question before I get you out of here, man. What are your three favorite songs? I know you listen to so much music, thousands Ooh. upon thousands of music. Like, give me your three favorite songs. <laughs> oh god, I know it's gonna be hard. I know you. I know That's it's hard, be hard as hard. hell. I god damn you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, let's see. Um, for show, uh, Atlantis uh, by the Isley Brothers. That's for show up there. Um, mm, dang, it's for sure gonna be some old school. It's the Isley Brothers, Atlantis. Uh, who else do I want to go with? Dang. Got you gotta think. Uh, man, you got me stumped. Like, ooh, PYT, Michael Jackson. Okay, that's a that's a great one. That's a All great right, so one. I got Let me get some. Uh, let me get some women up in here for my last one. Uh. Oh, and I'm these are just really like a random thing. And I'm gonna go s- sweet thing, Mary J. Blige. Oh, Mary Ooh, J. Let me take Oh, I might want some Tina Marie in there. I might want some. Oh, <laughs> hey, you just got a list up there. Just I got rolling. a list, bro. Anything, like, man, I'm a sucker for that old school R&B. That old school R&B, classic, man. Just like, that, that music was just so, you could just feel the love and the, and the passion in that music back then, man. The RPMs or, or is it BPMs or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It was just, it just, it was lower, it was just lower back then. And the songs were just breathing a lot more. It ain't so up, up tempo. Even though the R&B now is just so up tempo. And it Man. doesn't like it's so up tempo, and it's like uh, but the the old music is like real low. The RPMs are real slow on it, and you can kind yeah. of just like really vibe with like that Mary J, that old school and pain Mary J. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, go that Lauren Hill. Yeah, Lauren. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, Erica Badu, like that old music. It just Ooh, like that low. Oh, and I didn't have Erica in my top yeah, three. Ooh, yeah, 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 I'm saying I something Erica Badu, you know what I mean? So, like, that low, that, them, them vibes Excuse are real me. cool, you know what I mean? So, they fit for the brunches. So, man, I appreciate you for hopping on here. But before we get off, I want you to, like, plug your, you know, socials, your website, where people can find you, you know what I mean? All that good stuff. Yeah, so um, mostly just on Instagram, DJ Critty, you know, at DJ C R I D D Y. Um, website is DJ Critty ENT dot com. And yeah, for any like inquiries, anything like that, just hit me up on the IG or on the website. And uh, yeah, I'm on, on Twitter too. I ain't really on there. I don't be tweeting or nothing. But <laughs> if you need to reach out to me on there, <laughs> I'll eventually see it. But yeah, uh, we're gonna, but yeah we, man, we're gonna get created to you know, throw us up. A, I'm gonna put them on the spot. I'm gonna get them to throw us up a, a, a little quick mix for us or something, man. We maybe we can throw it in the pod where they can kind of click the link and go get a, a quick uh DJ mix from Critty. They might yeah. want to throw it on at the function at the crib or something like that. In no, I got them. Yeah, so we're gonna try to get him. I'm gonna try to get him to send me over a quick when he get a chance to send a a, a nice little link to one of his uh, mixes, and he can kind of get it for me too. For when I'm at the crib chilling and vibing, and I'm kicking back with the wife on the weekend and get the wine or something. You know what I mean? How we do it. Man, I got you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Vibes. It's, it's yeah, all it absolutely, is. man. So, <laughs> again, I want to say thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on. And, and before I get out here, I want to say, man, it's always about betting on yourself, be inspired to be great. And always, you know, work with other people because they will be the ones that get you the furthest. You know, you can go far, you can go far with others than you can by yourself. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the park wrap the podcast up. This your boy Frank Nitty. I'm out. Appreciate you, bro. <laughs>